Good morning. I'm Matthew Carter, and I'm 13. I was born here, and I've been treated here ever since. I've had 18 trips to the operating room for everything from ear tubes to big surgeries. I've learned a huge amount from all that I've been through. I've developed skills and have understandings about myself that are silver linings to all of this. So I am here to tell you some of the things that I know will help you help other kids. One, talk to my parents, but tell me directly what's going on. Even when I was really little, I wanted to know what was happening. It was helpful when the doctors and nurses had a conversation with my parents, but then turned to me and talked. But then, no. <laughs> It was helpful when the doctors and nurses had a conversation with my parents, but then turned to me and talked to me about it too. Hearing it from my mom afterwards isn't the same as being able to talk to the doctors and nurses myself. When you come into a room for a procedure, tell me what's going to happen. Don't just start doing things to me. It's very scary. Two, please don't ask my mom or dad to help hold me down during the painful procedure. It's confusing and makes it much scarier. Three, please call me by my name if you can. Four, take me on a tour of the hospital. I'm afraid of many things in the hospital, but fear of the unknown is one of the biggest. Show me the pre and post-op rooms. Show me a picture of the OR. Take me to the PD floor and show me the playroom. Tell me I can go into the OR with a parent and my favorite stuffed animal. Five, ask me about my preferences. I will be glad to tell you what I like or don't like. It will help me to feel more comfortable and feel like I have a voice in this whole process. Six, give me a little control. The hospital is a place of absolutely no control. If you give me some choices, even about very little things, it helps. Having a little bit of control helps me be less anxious. Seven, look for my fear triggers. Smells are still huge fear triggers. Hand sanitizer gives me flashbacks. I can be afraid of sounds. When I had my graft surgery, a team would come in to check the blood flow to my free flap by poking it with a syringe. When I was sedated, I could hear the ripping of the plastic wrapping off the syringe. I was scared to death of that sound. My mom mentioned that I had white coat syndrome, at no, white coat phobia, at check-in once, and three doctors came in the exam room without their white coats on, just, so, just to make me feel more comfortable. Eight, listen to my parents. If I'm li really little, I may not have much of a voice, but my parents know me best and they can tell you. I had my second big surgery when I was four. My parents knew it took a lot more drugs than the average adult just to keep me sedated <coughs> and that I burned through them really quickly. My mom knew when I was a baby and was hallucinating from withdrawal, I couldn't talk but she saw me following things in the air with my finger that weren't there. Because a nurse listened, I got better care. Nine, tell me if you don't know something. The best of the best were the caregivers who weren't afraid to tell us they didn't know. I knew, had, I, knew I had a rare disease. I also knew having a locked jaw was rare, but we went to seven different hospitals to get opinions. Not everyone had an answer for us, and that was okay. Just tell me if you don't know. 10, be open to learning from me. When I was in a drug-induced coma, the doctors and nurses assured my parents that I couldn't hear and couldn't respond when I was really out from the medicine. My parents kept insisting that it wasn't true, that I could hear and I didn't know what was going on in the room, and that I could participate. They found out that I that I could respond and communicate to them by moving my finger when completely out on version and fentanyl. 11, teach me to communicate with you. When I was four, I was trained for the first time. We didn't know in advance this would happen, so my parents told me my voice had been turned off for a little while. We made up our own sign language so I could have a voice. Teach me to have a voice with you. Give me your, give me your words so I can communicate in your language. 12. Talk about the effects of long-term medical treatment with me and my family. Help me to understand that there will be mental and emotional side effects from all this treatment. Help my parents to know what learning disabilities I may have from prolonged sedation and chemotherapy and show them what to look for.
Teach us to look for issues I might face like anxiety or depression. 13. Connect me with other kids. The cancer center had some parties where I could, where I was with other kids who understood what my life was like. A social worker connected us with another family whose son was being treated for the same tumor at the same time as me. It was nice to know there were other kids out there who understood being with kids who get it is important. I really want to thank all the people at this hospital who have helped me over the years. I have not met, no, I have met some amazing people who have really inspired me. The standouts were the ones who I formed connections with because they cared so much about me. Not the kid with the decimoid tumor and trismus, but Matthew Carter, the four-year-old who loved airplanes, the nine-year-old who wanted to be in the army, and the 13-year-old who wants to be a facial reconstructive surgeon. I credit the amazing people at Mass General for saving my life, and there are no words to express the gratitude I feel.